let's jump right into our first big topic of the week. Yes. A growing number of RTX 4090 owners are posting images of their cards melted 12 volt high power connectors. Let's go ahead and uh, here, let's pop on to Reddit r slash NVIDIA. Yeah. Adapter burned. Uh, whoa, oh, 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 no, that, that, that looks fine. Yeah, apparently you can re-terminate it. Oh my goodness, that should not be necessary. <laughs> Uh, no, okay, that mega thread apparently was uh, not the right link. Anyway. The main culprit is the uh, is the adapter that is included in the box with your excessively expensive graphics card. People that have gotten third-party adapters from like Corsair, Cable Mod, and many others uh, have been having a much better time. I know Be Quiet, I, I believe, and, and a few other brands as well have, have made some third-party ones. The issue is that NVIDIA is taking four eight-pin connectors and then even with the smaller gauge wires that they're using compared to the, the, the standard eight pin connectors that are going in, even with these smaller gauge wires, taking tw tw those, like, what, 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 what does that work out to? Eight, thir thir 32, 32 pins of, of wire. And they're trying to bring that all down to these 12 through the, the, these 12 pins in the new adapter. And they're using this like, uh, it's really cool. Igor's lab has great foil, pictures. You yeah. should head over to Igor's lab's yes. website because um, he'll show you that basically there's two larger contact pads in the middle for, uh, I forget exactly which pins those are for, but it's like a, it's like a one-to-one. -one. And then on the outside, there's these like smaller ones. So what happens is if the adapter gets flexed, there's a strong chance that these these soldered wires uh, on these pads will actually loosen, weaken or loosen. And then if you guys are familiar with uh, what happens when a connection loosens, when you have a very, very small point of contact, what can happen is it increases the resistance, which causes the heat to go up, which causes, well, the plastic around it to melt. And according to Igor's lab, this is fundamentally a build quality issue. So it's essentially, either cheaping out which i don't think is i don't think is likely yeah i mean you look at how much nvidia's like founders edition coolers cost for example they don't have to make the whole thing out of metal you know the shroud and everything if they were trying to save you know 14 cents there are certainly other areas where they could have yeah. shaved some cost <laughs> yeah, right definitely. so it's either them cheaping out or it's down to bad quality control or more realistically, Igor's Labs believes, is down to a, a bad, flawed design that just nobody managed to catch. Um, I guess that's pretty much it, isn't it? There's really surprisingly not a lot else to add to this. The, yeah. what, the best way to avoid it if you uh, currently are a wealthy person with a 4090 is to get rid of your first party connector and get one of the third party ones. There are a bunch of third party options. I have heard that they're actually kind of difficult to get your hands on, <laughs> potentially harder than 4090s, which is kind of funny. Um, but I'm sure the companies that do make them are trying to rush to keep them in stock. So keep your eyes out. Try to... Uh, get one of those cables and you should probably be okay um but even with the third party cables as far as my understanding goes because of uh cable mods actually very clear um and good instructions i will jump to my screen really quick do not bend it horizontally do not <laughs> bend it vertically do not bend it at all until you are 35 millimeters away from the connector and that's with their own cable. You can see their little branding on the thing. Mm -hmm. So that's even with the better third-party cable. Um, there's there's actually someone online. I don't have uh, a, a reference to this, unfortunately, right now. But there's someone online that's offering uh, like 3D model files for making a brace. Oh. That makes it come straight out for at least, I believe it's actually 35 millimeters. That's pretty and cool. And then it bends. That's pretty smart. Maybe check and, and try to find that. Uh, potentially, if you have the first party or third party cables. Um, but yeah, don't bend them in any direction. <laughs> uh, small form factor builders beware because, you know. I mean, it's yeah. one of those things where in a perfect world, we all would have been able to just use native 
12 pin connectors on our GPUs, but because of the sense wires that detect whether it should be operating in 450 watt or 600 watt mode, there isn't really a way to take a legacy power supply and have it have the full functionality of the 12 volt, or excuse me, the 12 volt, the 12 pin connector. So we're in a situation where I don't remember a time that we've run into this where you absolutely have to use an adapter. Like I think there's only what one or two power supplies on the market that actually have the 12 volt high power connector. Yeah. Yeah, not so much of a thing. Uh, there's some people in Flowplane chat talking about um, like, just don't bend it. Have your power supply outside of your case. Just run it like, straight in. <laughs> run it in a completely straight line. You know, this is actually a problem for me. I, I tweeted recently that I was thinking of skipping the 4000 series. Yeah. And the reason for that is actually, well, it's, there are a couple of reasons. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not skipping because, you know, it doesn't perform well. Right, it's a freaking fast card. I'll, yeah, sure. I'd I'd love to have a forty ninety. Take the power. Yeah, yeah forty ninety yeah. in my system. Sure. Yeah, it sounds yeah. great. Um, the issues for me are twofold. One is that I'm a big dumb and I water cooled my GPU with hardline tubing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you gotta take that one. <laughs> yep. That's uh, pretty dumb because it means that instead of an upgrade taking, I like I I, t I tell you. I could probably swap a GPU in like 30 seconds if I really had to. Like, it's pretty quick for me. Um, done it a lot of times, okay? It takes it from maybe a couple minute operation to like a couple hours. I, I was literally talking within the last week about how way, way back, you and I tried to kind of push the popularity of like, yeah, have, have quick disconnects on your GPU. So you can swap them quickly and just no one cared. No. Uh, like immediately after we tried to push that, everyone was like, hardline. I know. I know. <laughs> like, well, no, it. no. I mean, you can get that kind of concept in AIOs now. Yeah. Like EK did did AIOs and the whole idea was that totally. your, your new GPU would come with, with everything pre-attached and you would just click it back in. Yeah. I have no idea how many people actually bought into that concept though. I suspect the numbers are extremely low really based low. on how little marketing I've seen around yes. that approach. Yeah. I mean, maybe in more like a commercial or like industrial setting or something like that. Like if I was uh, like we oh, we've seen it with um oh, let's start Camino. Camino has taken a similar approach where everything is is hot swappable, yeah. like what we talked about. Makes sense, yeah. But the cost of quick disconnects is so high that it just it just doesn't make sense for the average consumer. By the time you spend that money, you should have bought a better GPU, or yeah. you should have squirreled it away for an upgrade for the next one. Yeah. But there's another reason. There, so there are a couple of reasons that I am not planning to upgrade. First of all is the hassle. And the second reason is that I simply do not believe that a 4090 would fit in my computer. Yeah, and, and I mean, another one with these problems that we're seeing right now, would you want to have these risks in a computer that is away from where you are so you might mm. not be able to notice if there's a problem? I mean, I... Okay, I don't want to be dismissive of risk. Obviously, a fire is a really, really bad thing. But I don't think there's a whole lot to burn near where okay. my GPU yeah, would be. Yeah, that's probably fair enough. Like, there's there's the top of the GPU. Because you're in a rack. It's all metal. It's in a metal rack. Yeah. It's, like, three feet away from any wall on either probably side. probably just going to burn itself. Like, if it, yeah. if it burned some plastic inside the computer, I suspect that that would stay quite contained yeah that makes sense um and I, to be clear i'm not saying that you should never worry about a fire in your computer there have been instances particularly with those older remember those acrylic cases that were kind of popular in the early 2000s acrylic is a fairly flammable material actually and there were some cases where <laughs> uh cases caught on fire and you, you you do not want to have something like that like luke said away from you but no for me the bigger problem is that i'm using a 4u rack mount case which is only about this much taller so you have to you have to crank the cables i would so you're have like to. you're like eight pin only yeah 